What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and today we're gonna be talking about the trial of the sword. If you have the expansion pass DLC and you've already obtained the master sword from its super secret, not secret, location, you can return to the Korok forest and place the master sword back which will bring you into the trials. I'm gonna be going over prep for the trials, then some helpful hints, and then covering all three parts of the trials. Now, you may be done with the first or first two thirds of the trials, and you're stuck on the final part, but I'm gonna recommend watching this video all the way through, as there's a lot of really helpful things that are gonna be valid for all three parts of the trials. Plus, you're gonna be spending like two to 10 hours on this. I think watching a 10 minute video all the way through is worth it, right? Also, if you have a friend who's doing Trial of the Sword, be sure to share this with them on social media, text them a link, whatever. First, let's talk prep. Four things to cover before we're going to dive in. There's a lot of treasure in here, and very, very helpful items hidden inside of some chests. Set up your Sheikah sensor to look for treasure chests. You'll be able to find hidden stuff like royal guard swords and ancient arrows. Second thing to know is that you can carry stat buffs into the trials, so I'd recommend a 30 minute defense buff or attack. You could cook up one of these with a dragon horn and three armored porgies, or mighty porgies for attack. Both of these porgies can be found on the small circle lake east of Eventide Island, and I'm sure you know how to farm dragon parts by now. Third, if you're not great at taking down a guardian by shield parrying, I'd really, really, really recommend practicing it. Like, a lot. And fourth, max out your hearts. If you have 120 shrines, no problem. Full stamina, 27 hearts, easy. If you're shy of that 120 shrine number, then I'd recommend doing full hearts and lacking in stamina. You're not going to be climbing a lot. You'll just be limited on your, your slow motion, air time, bow and arrow stuff. For the 120 club up there, might as well cook up a hearty radish or truffle before you enter for those three extra temporary hearts. Now that we're all set up with prep, there's a few pieces of advice here. Every single room, as soon as you enter, activate stasis to identify your enemies as well as any other objects that you can interact with. You'll be finding a lot of weapons in here, but you're not going to have Herbosa's Fury and 10 Savage Lionel Crushers. You're going to have a lot of very weak weapons, so use the weaker weapons to fight your lower tier enemies, as well as stronger enemies that you disarmed. By the way, disarming enemies is going to be key. Also, if you didn't know, once you start the beginning trials, you won't be able to save. You need to finish all of them, and there are 12 levels. If you die, you have to load your most recent save and start from level 1. If you beat all 12 levels, you're going to be returned to the Lost Woods, and you can choose to start the middle trials at any time. Also, you can save. The middle trials, there are 17 of them, and there are 23 final trials. When you first start, you'll be thrown into a Matrix-like simulation of the Great Plateau, with nothing. Imagine Eventide, but no champion's abilities and no wrath for smuggling items on board. You can only use what you scavenge and pick up. You'll be starting with a tree branch in your underwear. Sexy. When you first start, bombs are going to be a big friend of yours. They're great against low tier enemies as well as disrupting large groups of enemies that are running after you. The first room has three bow goblins and a campfire. You can try to sneak up and steal their weapons from the log or just climb the tree and bomb all three of them at once. Once all the enemies in the room are defeated, scour the entire room, and you're going to be looking for dropped and placed weapons, hidden chests that beat from your Sheikah sensor, and metal boxes as well as wooden boxes and crates. If you took my advice with the 30 minute defense buff, you can still scavenge the room, but just don't waste too much time. Once you have a more full inventory, attack the boxes and crates that you find with your weapons, not bombs. Every piece of food in them may save your life, so you don't want them flying away. Remember, axes take less damage and deal more damage to wooden crates, and sledgehammers are more effective against metal boxes. On floor two, the Bokoblin on the right side of the enemy encampment has a bow, and there are two barrels next to him that have arrows. This game is just setting you up for success. You can shoot the fire choo-choo and glide up with his explosion and fire to the upper areas of the encampment. While in the air, you can shoot enemies in the face easier without them noticing you. Also, once you get a wooden shield, you can start to farm enemies from the Bokoblin archers. Floor three just has choo-choos. 
You can shoot them from far away with your newly farmed arrows. You'll be finding a lot of arrows in this section of the game, so don't be afraid to use them, especially on enemies like Choo Choo's that can burst into a ball of flames, ice, or electricity upon death. And of course, you can use bombs to conserve arrows for your more non-threatening enemies. This room is a great example of the trial's hidden chests. There are two chests on wooden platforms on the walls of this room. You won't have any fire arrows yet, so you most likely have to use the Choo Choo's fire to shoot them down, or possibly use their fire to glide up and then get it and just not kill all of them yet. Anyways, you'll have to use a lot of effects of enemies' death quite a bit, especially for Choo Choo's, and kinda keys too. You've probably collected a bunch of spears by now, so don't be so quick as to throw those away. They may not have a high power rating, but you can unleash a lot of attacks quickly and keep your enemies at a distance. On floor 7, you'll be finding a rest area. The beginning trials has one rest area, the middle trials has two, and the final has three. The rest areas are going to provide you a varying amount of fairies based on the rest level, three chests with various helpful items, four crates with items and food, usually four mushrooms growing, two apples on a tree, some other trees, three fish, and a cooking pot. If you took my advice on the 30 minute buff, then you want to make sure that you cook any benefit giving food with a different benefit giving food. This way it'll cancel them out. Like cook an iron shroom and a mighty banana together. You want them just for the hearts, not for their effects. And there's no monster parts, so don't worry about making dubious food, it can't happen. You most likely won't need to collect the wood from the trees in here until the third trial, and that's only to help melt some ice faster, so it's not even a necessity. Also, you won't really need tree branches or Korok leaves that could fall from the trees here. Floor 8 is where it starts to suck, a lot. This game is gonna start to throw Lizalfos at you, and they can swim, they have ranged attacks, and they're fast, and they can jump from afar. So try to separate them as much as possible. Also, this is a great enemy to use spears on. And don't be a hero. You can use stasis on an enemy, and it'll make hitting agile enemies much easier. Like on level 9, there's Octorox and Wizrobes. Use Stasis on a Wizrobe and shoot him in the face once or twice, and then he'll fall to the ground. And that'll make getting damage on him much easier. Floor 10 is a level that a lot of people start to have trouble with, and there's a bunch of higher tier Lizalfos here. I'd recommend staying on the circle area and keep knocking them off. Keeping them off with bombs, and if they climb up, knock them off with a quick combo to get them back into the water. This may be a little bit more of a tedious process, but it conserves your hearts, and that's one of the most important parts here. Floor 11 is a nice boat ride that you need to crit a bunch of Bokoblins on platforms. If you hit them directly in the face, they're gonna fall back and possibly fall in the water. Remember, Bokoblins and Moblins can't really swim, so if you shoot them in the face, knock them in the water, that's immediate death, and makes your job much easier. Floor 12 is the last level of the beginner trials, and you're going to be going up against a blue Henix with metal shin guards. So just keep your distance and take him out normally. Remember that the first time you shoot him in the eye, you can grab all the weapons from around his neck. And this is going to be the last battle of the beginner trials, so unleash everything you have on him. Now, let's talk about the middle trials. The middle trials first start with a section that focuses a bit on wind. Dodging enemies can be a little difficult in such a small place, so don't be afraid to use stasis to get a couple hits off on them, especially since you're starting with no gear once again. Also remember that stasis on an exploding barrel is totally a thing. On the second floor, you'll be put up against two fire whiz robes. You can stasis them and shoot them in the face and they'll fall into the pit of death and that'll make your life a little bit easier. There's a lot of wind here, so use your slow time archery skills to your advantage. Same thing goes for the next floor, floor 3. And if you've gone around to all the barrels and chests, you should have a small collection of various arrows at this point, which is going to be very helpful. Floor 4 is a single guardian. Deflect it once and the room is done. See, remember I said shield parrying, super important for this? Floor 5 is a rest point. And the sixth level is going to bring you to a dark themed area. Anything that emits light, shoot it in the face. The next floor has a lot more enemies. Just remember that every enemy that has damage now has a health meter on it and it makes tracking them much easier. The eighth floor has a few whiz robes and now it's a great time to remember to use those ice arrows on fire enemies and vice versa. Floor nine is a single stationary guardian. Deflect it once and you're done. 
Floor 10 is a Hoenix in the dark, just like the Five Flow Ruin Shrine. His eye is gonna glow pretty bright, and his shin guards are burnable, so he shouldn't give you too much trouble. Floor 11 is another rest point, but now there's two fairies, yay! Sneak up, make sure to collect both of those, cook up some goodies, and your second piece of armor. The next floor, 12, is filled with guardian scouts. With defense up 3, they don't really pose a threat. Every time that you get shot, it's gonna do a quarter of a heart, so take them out easily. Floor 13 is several weak guardian scouts. The first one has a spear, and remember that guardians are weak to guardian weapons. Also, there's a hidden chest that you need to use magnesis for in this room. The next room is kind of a combination of the previous two, and it shouldn't give you any trouble. Make sure to use arrows on their stationary guardian scouts, and then take out the floor guardian scouts with ease. Floor 15 pins you up against two much harder guardian scouts. Try to separate them. Also remember that if both of them spin rush at you at the same time, only one will be stopped by a pillar. And floor 16 of the middle trials is your last floor. It's a major test of strength. That means the hardest guardian scout. Now, you don't need to conserve your weapons or arrows since it's the last level, so throw everything you've got at him. Time for the final trials. The final trials start with a reigning theme and lots of stall enemies. There's going to be a lot of rusty weapons sitting on the floor in these levels, and they attract the lightning, so use that to your advantage. Also, you'll probably find some bokoblin arms just kind of chilling on the ground. Those are going to be your first weapons. You can also use magnesis on a rusty weapon to lure lightning to enemies. Search throughout these first four areas well, as there's going to be some elemental arrows. And grab all the rusty weapons that you can for later, trust me. Level 2 has some electric keys, and I just learned that they attract lightning. Did not know that was a thing. Stahl is also spawned inside of the skull with some powerful weapons. Keep in mind that they only have 1 HP, so use spears to take them out while keeping your distance. Be sure to use Magnesis to get that buried chest right next to the skull, and you're going to find a Royal Guard sword. That's going to help a lot. Level 3 is a lot of fun. You could grab a metal chest at the start and just use it to take out all the enemies by slamming it into their head. Stall Moblins come out of the ground when you get close to their spawn point. Now is a level that once you've taken out all the enemies, I'm going to recommend getting rid of any bone and wood weapons that you can, and pick up any metal and rusty weapons that you can. Level 4 is also a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of stall bokoblins on horseback. I recommend climbing a tree and using stasis on them to remove them from the horse, then a single shot to the head and you won't need to worry about them anymore. Level 5, we get a Stalnix. If you have the Hylian Shield, I'm sure you know how to take care of this guy. He's gonna drop a fire, ice, and electric weapon. And oh boy, are these going to be really helpful going forward. All three of them serve a very, very specific purpose. I'm gonna let you know what those are when the time comes. Floor 6 is one of your three rest areas, and you're probably wondering why you just got Flame Breaker boots. Well, get ready for a lot of flames. Floor 7 has two flame pebbles, and you could either let the Earth Octorok knock them out, or hit them with ice and pick them up to take care of them. Now is your opportunity to turn all of your rusty weapons into non-rusty ones with this Octorok, and that's going to fill your inventory with some much better weapons. On Floor 8, there are three fire-breathing Lizalfos and updrafts. Keep in mind these enemies die with one single ice arrow or a swipe from an ice weapon, which is good news for you. Same thing goes for the Wizrobes and the Zolfos on level 9. Although, just keep in mind that hitting a fire Wizrobe while he's stasis with an ice weapon doesn't count as an opposite elemental attack, so you need to do it without stasis. On level 10, you're going to find a camp with moblins with some really powerful weapons. Use your electric weapon to disarm and disable them. They can't deal much damage once they're unarmed. Also, there's a chest in the lava with three ancient arrows. Make sure to grab those. Level 11 is an Igneo Talus. Swipe him with your ice weapon to cool him off. Then swing your sledgehammer at him for an easy kill. Bomb off his arms before he goes all flame on. <laughs> and then you'll be able to keep him cooled off and then mount him again. Level 12 is your second of three rest areas for the final trials, at which you'll be getting a Hylian tunic. There's also going to be some spicy peppers and hearty radishes here. The next few levels are ice-based, so cooking the spicy peppers as well as the sizzlefin trout will really help keep you warm after your defense up runs out. 
Level 13 is pretty simple. Use fire on the ice pebbles to take care of them. Remember for the harder enemies to disarm them with your thunder blade and then they won't pose much of a threat anymore. Also, some of the large icicles in this area, if you melt them, they give you a chest. Your Sheikah sensor should probably tell you which ones those are. Level 14 has some ice enemies that you could take out with your fire arrows. There's also going to be three ancient arrows in a chest in some ice. Make sure to grab those. Level 15 is a larger camp. Use your fire arrow on the Wizrobe as soon as possible. He has a blizzard rod and it can really, really mess you up. Again, use your thunder blade on the stronger enemies to disarm them. Level 16 is a frost talus. Treat this like the fire talus, but you know, ice instead of fire. Hit him with the, the fire thing, great. Level 17 is going to be one of the easiest levels you're going to be doing. It's a Lionel. Shoot it with an ancient arrow, you're done. I'm serious, he just disappears and he's considered dead. Now, if you think this is cheap, then don't do it and lose a lot of hearts and that's fine. You're gonna have a lot of harder battles ahead of you. So, uh, gonna definitely recommend these ancient arrows. Level 18 is your final rest area and you're gonna need it. There's three fairies here and I hope you have all of your fairies from the previous levels as well. Also, there's some hearty bass. Make sure to cook those bass up one at a time, as each one is going to give you temporary hearts and fully restore all of your hearts. Level 19 is going to be six dormant guardians. Use the trees as cover and shield reflect them one at a time. Once those two are taken out, another two will wake up automatically. And then again. Level 20 is a single Roman Guardian. He only takes three shield deflects to defeat him. Also, there's optional horses if you want to take him out that way, but gonna definitely recommend the shield deflects. Level 21 is a single Flying Guardian. Personally, I've never done a good job with them. Optimally, you just want to shield deflect them. Alternatively, you could destroy all the propellers so it's helpless and lays on the ground, and it's actually kind of sad. You should put it out of its misery. Level 22 is a whole party of guardians, all three of them, a walking, flying, and a stationary castle one. Make sure to take them out one at a time. If you're gonna use any ancient arrows here, that's fine. Just make sure to keep one or two for later. And the finale, level 23, you're going to be going up against a stationary castle guardian, 10 red bow goblins with powerful weapons on horseback, and a silver lionel. First thing, ancient arrow to the lionel, he's out of there. Wherever you choose to battle these Bokoblins, I'm gonna recommend being out of range of the Guardian. For the Bokoblins, you can just kill them with one shot with a well-placed bomb or a single hit from a spear. They're all red basic Bokoblins, so take advantage of that. The more you break them up, the easier your life is gonna be. Don't bother mounting a horse. It's gonna be a waste of time and you're gonna be knocked off immediately. And then lastly, take out that stationary Guardian. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a pretty solid strategy for taking on every single level for Trial of the Sword. I hope it was helpful, and I know it was long, so thank you for sticking around. If you have any additional pieces of advice, be sure to drop them in the comment section down below. Be sure to click the card in the top right corner to see my other DLC videos. Until next time, Austin John out. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. I'm going to be giving you guys lots of helpful videos in the next following days and weeks. Till next time, Austin John out.